that town was very coldish. You know, some kid hit me last night, you know. When we were kids, we were raised to do everything the best. Like, we went to Hashways. There was no fast food. You didn't eat at that place. Like, you didn't step foot in that place. You know, that's just the way it is. You lived off discipline, a certain discipline. And I carried that discipline out here. Like, I'm a regular, I'm not a bagel head. You don't know, you'll never hear me going to pizza. I don't care. I'm here, I'm not here for the fucking pizza anyway. I'm here for a dream or for enough here for a bagel. But when it comes to food, I'm very traditional, Cuban, you know, you got to have this shit somewhere. I don't want it. I'd rather not have second best, you know. It's like some guy said to me last night on Twitter, well, I want to take you to church Popeyes. I wouldn't walk into fucking Popeyes. I wouldn't walk in. I made a mistake one time. I was sick for four fucking days. I'll never do it again. I go, I'm a Chick-fil-A guy. He goes, Chick-fil-A is a better sandwich, but don't you want to taste the Popeyes just to compare it? I go, why would I fuck with the best? It's the best. It's the best. I'm going to go to Popeyes. Last time I went to Popeyes, I took the skin off the chicken. I could see four toes. The breast was a guy's foot. You could see it. It didn't take a genius. I wish I was lying to you. It was like a fucking foot that they had cut at the ankle. Not at the ankle, at the at the insole. And they deep fried it. That's what it looked like. I never went back in there. Never again. And then my daughter went in there one day with my wife. I told my wife, can't bring her in here, G. Yeah, but it's good. You can't bring her in here. We don't eat that shit. We don't do that. We don't, we don't. Parlez-vous Francais. When I was a kid in Cuba in the 50s, the fast food would come to you. We had guys with carts. And it would be like they had either had a bell or they had their pregón, which is like their slogan. You know, they would be singing Manicero, you know, selling uh, peanuts or whatever, you know. And the best Chick-fil-A type sandwiches Pan empanizado, viste empanizado, or pollo empanizado, which is like breaded, 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 right there, made fresh. And this little cart, this guy's pushing this cart along the street, you know, and he's got it like a like a grill, you know, like a like a hibachi grill. Like the Mexicans now, yeah, they yeah, do with the, the street yeah. tacos. Yeah, that was our fast food. Yeah, but they don't move to you. No, no, no. These guys move they, around. They the, walked around. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. badass. Yeah, and they're like yelling out, letting everybody in the neighborhood that he's coming. Like ice cream man. Yeah, and and my mom had a basket with a rope, and she would put the money in there, put the basket down with the rope, and the guy would put take the money and put the uh, the sandwich, and she would take the basket right up, and that that was our you know that was our fast food, you know, and it was amazing, fresh, and it had soul. Because the guy will be singing along with it, you know. <laughs> if I could have a basket hanging out of my window, I would never leave the house. I no, would no, never leave the house. It was a balcony. We had I, don't, a, I don't care. Little, I would never balcony. leave the house yeah. every day. <laughs> yeah, they come to you. The ice cream guy, granizado, you know, where he says shave eyes, you shave know, with ice. that with that uh, jizz on it. And <laughs> yeah. And they uh, you know, all, all that uh peanuts, oysters, oyster cart. Oysters already prepared with uh, with the sauce and everything, you know. Ostione. 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 Yeah. yeah, oyster. Yeah. I don't like those fucking yeah. things. Yeah. What Cuban rules didn't you like that you felt? Well, you know, it wasn't as much as my family had rules. It was more. I mean, you know, my mom had some guide. You know, of course, you know, guidance and things you can do, you cannot do. For example, she had the law that if my, if my brother and I we were fighting, you know, over anything, you know, stupid things that kids do. She would hit us with a belt, both. Not one, but whoever, whoever, if if you were guilty, you're gonna get hit, and if everybody you were not guilty, hit. yeah, you were gonna everybody get hit too. Hit. Yeah, yeah, yeah everybody got hit. That. So that was like a main rule, you know, <laughs> in our house. So you didn't tell anyone. <laughs> you know, so we, we, we didn't fight over anything, you know. And then, um, uh, you know, but it was more cultural, social rules, you know, that if, that if you went out into the streets and you were in, and you were facing Miami as a a culture, an extension of Cuba. You know, you were still had those rules that they were applied to you in Cuba, but in Miami, and they really did not apply anymore in Miami. You know, but because you're, it's part of the United States, so it was a. a I found it very tough for some people to assimilate early on, first generation Cubans. My 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 family. <laughs> For example, they had like a, a cutoff point. If it was like 
across the street from Flagler, where they live, that was Coral Gables. They wouldn't go there because that's Coral Gables. They wanted to live in the Northwest, in Sawe, in Northwest. You know, that was more like a Cuban Cuban territory. So they had that cutoff. You know, that was that was the rule. Don't go to Coral Gables. You'll get lost. It's a lot of white people there. <laughs> they'll know they're not going to help you get back home. Basically, my rules, I couldn't. <laughs> the rules of the house were mira oye kaya. I wasn't allowed to repeat what I heard in the house, but the three <laughs> monkeys were everywhere. All right, you know when they cover their eyes, there. Yeah. You know. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, I couldn't do. And then when Juan came into the picture, he brought even more rules because he was the ultimate machismo Cuban man. The guy that, you know, he wouldn't be in a room with a man that was gay. Mm -hmm. If he was in a room with oh, yeah, well, a gay man yeah. walked in, he'd walk exactly, out. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, not allowed to drink in public. Can't let nobody drink in public. Mm -hmm. Very no flash. Mm -hmm. You have to confuse the people of who you are. Don't yeah. let them... You know, he was always confusing people. Yeah. So he brought different rules into my life, you know. We weren't allowed to talk on the phone about anything. Like, even if I knew something, I wasn't allowed to. I'll never forget them pulling up one day and meet, getting into a beef. I had to be maybe Mercy's age, mm -hmm. six, and getting into a beef outside, and the cop broke it up, and me talking to the cop. My mother coming up to me going, don't say two words to a motherfucker. You know, you're not allowed to talk to cops. It was like so, there were so many fucking rules in my house growing up that it was confusing. And I kept to them. Like, I never repeated the life I was living inside my house. But one of the positive rules that my mother had was I was not allowed to speak Spanish outside the house. In the house, she wanted me to speak Spanish. She's... I still remember us having that conversation that she didn't want to raise no fucking Ricky Ricardo with an accent. That your accent has to be American. You're an American. You know, my rules, the plan for me was laid out. You know how these Arabs complain? I left because I, they wanted me to marry my cousin. Well, I had the same rules. I, I wasn't going to marry my cousin. They, oh, no. They pretty much had a woman for me to marry. It was her goddaughter. Mm -hmm. That was the plan, that I married her goddaughter. So they always pushed us together when we were kids. We're going in like fucking Marines, you understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.